Um, let's get back to the same uh, problem as before. Um, a needle and a syringe is considered, con a syringe contains the medicine with density of water. The barrel has a cross-section area of 2.5 times 10 to minus 5 square meters. And the needle has a cross-section area of 1 times 10 to the minus 8 square meters. And in the absence of the force on the plunger, the pressure everywhere is 1. A force of magnitude 2 newton sack on the plunger, making medicine squirt horizontally from the needle, determine the speed of medicine as it leaves the needle tips. Um, at first, I used Bernoulli equation and assuming that the V1 is a pro zero, which is not true, because anyway, the plunger will move and there are some velocity here. So with that mistake, you see the mistake on the right, it turns out the velocity is 632 meters per second, so that's too much. So we change it to this, P1 plus one half V1 square equal to P2 plus one half V2 square. Uh, one is on the ref side, on the plunger, uh, and two is on the needle. So we have one half P of uh, V1 square minus V2 square equal to P2 minus P1. P2 is on the needle side, it is only atmospheric pressure. P1 is atmospheric pressure plus the pressure from force 2 newtons divided by dA. So this subtract gives you a negative 2 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, V1 and V2 is related according to continuity equation K1V1 is equal to A2V2. So we can find V1 in terms of V2, which we don't we want we want to find it. So we have one half row of a small a over a, the needles uh, cross-section area divided by the plunger area times v2 square minus by v2 square. Plug in all the number and it would give out that the Velocity that come out on the needle side is 12.6 meters per second. Now, if it's in real life, on this side, there will be a pressure inside our needles on in, inside our vein or uh, blood vessel. And that will be around 80 millimeters uh, of mercury. So, you need to push a little bit more force to to put the rock, uh, the medicine inside. Okay. So <clears throat> we come up to application of Bernoulli's equation. Well, actually, there are several uh, things uh, I forgot to change the language. It's called the lift of the of the airplanes the uh, Torricelli equation, and then the Venturi meter. Uh, first thing is the, about the lift, uh, which is not exactly what airplane use, but it's also playing part in create a lift on the airplane. And you will notice that the airplane or airfoil having a smooth and curved surface on the top, and sometimes a flat surface on the bottom. When the streamline reach this, uh, it turns out that the velocity on the top is moving a little bit faster than the velocity on the bottom. So with the same height, we have Bernoulli's equation say that P top plus one half rho V top square equal to P bottom plus one half rho V bottom square. And the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom is resulting in a lift. So the force time equal to A, the surface area of the wing, times the difference in pressure. And that will equal to one half rho A of V top square minus V bottom square. Now, 
in real life, we found out that the V top is not much different from V bottom. So the lift that create by Bernoulli equation is not that much. However, in actual cases, the wing of the nail plane will making a small angle of attack. So it's tilt a little bit upward that the flow of the air is collided to this wing and create a drag force or a retarded force that is proportional to velocity squared. And that is the actual, the principle, the, uh, the main force that create the lift on the airplane. However, we can use this. This is one example, a plane of mass uh, 1,430 kilograms have a 10 square meters of wing area. The wind speed above the wing is 1.2 V meters per second, where under the wing is V meters per second, which is the speed of the airplane. Given the air density is 1.3 kilograms per cubic meters by the speed of the airplane, Okay, we have, according to Bernoulli's equation, F equal to one half rho A, V top square minus V bottom square, Mg. The top speed is 1.2 V, so square it, it get 1.44 V square. So it's one half times density of the air of 1.3 kilogram per cubic meters times area of 10 meters per second. and times 1.44 minus one V square equal to mg, which is 1430 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second square. Solving for V square, it gave you 40 times 100 meters per sec meters square per second square, and then take a square root. It's about 70 meters per second or 252 kilometers per hour. Now this is this can be work when you are in the air. Okay. Um, the actual airlines is traveling at almost 700 kilometers per hour. Uh, 252 is okay. Uh, so more, considering this is not a big plane, it's just 1.4 tons uh, weight. Uh, but to live off with this, it needs a lot more velocity, okay? Uh, because the weight is not too much, as, especially with the bigger plane, okay? However, cruising speed, this is possible. The second application of uh, Bernoulli principle is called Torricelli principle. Um, this is when apply a Bernoulli's equation to find the speed of water when the hole is strike at the side or at the bottom of a water containing water inside. So we have a, a bucket or a barrel of water with a hole in it, and then the hole is h meters below the surface of the water. So the water come out of the hole and have some velocity. So the question is, what is the velocity that come out? In this case, both top surface and side surface having the same pressure. So it's having a P0 on both sides. It's an air atmospheric pressure on both sides. So we apply Torricelli principle. Uh, on the top side, it is P1 plus one half rho V1 square plus rho GH equal to on the side, on the whole, P2 plus one half rho V2 square. Both sides have the same pressure. So P1 and P2 is PA. So you can cancel it out multiply by two and divide by the row, uh, you got V2 square 
equal to V1 squared plus rho G, 2GH. Well, strangely, it's the same. It looks like the equation on linear motion, but it's not. Now we have the relation between the two velocity according to continuity equation a1 v1 equal to a2 v2. So we have v2 square minus a v2 over big A square equal to 2gh. And we have v2 is square root of 2gh divided by 1 minus a, small, a whole area divided by the bucket area square. Now, if the whole area is small compared to bucket area, this a small a over large a will turn to be zero. And then V2 is about root of 2gh. And that is terrestrial principle. Now, there are two questions according to this as an example. So if we have a bucket that fill with water to height capital H, and the hole is in the H meters below the surface of water. Uh, finding the question as finding the speed of water and finding the distance X, because once the water leaving the hole, it will move in projectile motion and then landing at the distance x meters away. And the question is, at what depth the hole will be to reach a maximum x? So we know that according to Torricelli equation, uh, the velocity that leaves the hole is square root of 2gh. And then it will turn out to be a projectile motion with zero vertical velocity. So according to projectile, y is to two to one half gt square. And the height of the projectile to go down the y, the displacement along the y axis is capital H minus small h equal to one half gt square. Or you can prove for t to be square root of two h, capital H minus h over g and then plug in back to find the x of vt. And substitute v equal to square root 2gh, you will find that the g and the g will cancel. And then x is square root of 4h times h minus h, or this x equal to square root of 4 small h, capital H minus 4h squared. Now, X will be maximum, you can guess. But in order to find the max, maximum X, you must realize this. If the hole is too close to the surface, the velocity is small. So it's going not so far. However, if the hole is close to the bottom, the velocity is great but the y component axis is small. So it's not so far either. So we can guess that to get the furthest distance, it has to be in the middle. We can prove that. Because x is square root of 4h times h minus small h, Take a derivative of x compared to small h and give it to be zero. So derivative of square root of 4h divided by h minus small h by d small h is zero. And you take this derivative and it turns out that h minus 2h have to be zero. So you take this, you have a root on the divide and then four and two, okay? And then you derivative, the derivative of root is get one half and then the derivative of the root is also get a root. And derivative of term inside is four, give that four on top and then the derivative of H times capital H minus H by the H. 
So you have a HS minus H squared, <laughs> two plus H. So it has H capital H minus two H equal to zero or the maximum distance will appear when the hole is at the middle of, of the tank. And sometimes this is landing on a kindergarten uh, exams that which one is the correct pictures for the water that come out of the hole. And the answer is the second one, uh, the second one, this one, because the middle one is the high, the furthest, and the top and the bottom one is closer. Uh, most of the students will, will pick the first one, but it's not right. Now, another example regarding the horizontal theorem is a container filled with water to the high edge have a cross section A at the bottom. Uh, a cross section on the top is capital A. And at the bottom, there is a hole of area small a. How long does it take to completely drain the container? So this is a little bit tricky because as the water go out, the level of water inside the container will, will lower down. And that means the velocity of the rate of flow will be slower. So at first it will drop out fast and then it will drop out slower as it approaches the bottom. So we cannot using average. In this case, we have to do an integration. Uh, speed of water is according to Terry principle and the rate of flow is Q equal to AB. So we take a look at this. According to Terry equation, the velocity is square root two gh divided by one minus a small a square over a capital A square, according to Bernoulli's equation. A is a, a small a is the whole area and the capital A is the bucket area. Now, a rate of flow is minus a v, a minus sign because it's going out. Uh, so the rate of change in volume by time is minus a times v. And the volume is the height times the cross section. So volume v is a times h. So a is dh by dt, the rate of change in height per time equal to minus a square root of two gh over one minus uh, small a square over capital A square. And you can find the h by dt in the form of minus c h square h to the one half. Uh, all of the comp constant is involved in the c. And the c is, as I said here, square root of 2g uh, small a divided by capital A square divided by one minus uh, small a by the capital A square. So we make an integration. The h by dt is minus c h to the one half. So the h divided by h to the one half is minus c dt. Integrate this from high h to zero of the h over h to the one half equal to minus c integrate from starting time zero to time, the total time. On the left side, integrate of h to the minus one half is h to the plus one half. And then there is a one over one half. So it's get a two. So it get a minus two h to the one half equal to minus ct. Minus sign will cancel. So the time is two h to the one half times the g, the c. And we can use an approximation to show that T is approximately the cross-section area of the large uh, 
the large container, the shard area divided by the whole area times square root of 2 H over G. So the high the high the ratio of the area, the longer the time it took to completely drain. Another example of Bernoulli equation is Venturi meters. And as a chemist, you might found this lay around in your lab some days. So it's a meters to measure a rate of flow. So we know that the pipe, the, well, the, uh, the flow of fluid coming in, and then the Venturi meters has a connection that the area will reduce to small, from capital A to small a. And we have a manometers to measure the difference in pressure on at two point, the one at the large capital A area and the, the one, the other one is at the small a area. And because um, the pressure at these two point will be different, the one, uh, the level of manometer will be different also regarding to the pressure difference. So the difference in pressure is rho gh of the manometers. Now, according to equation, so the Bernoulli's equation, P one plus one half rho V one square, equal to P2 plus one half rho V2 square. Now, if we know the ratio between the small a and the large a, we can find V1. Uh, so according to the, uh, Bernoulli's equation, Y1 and Y2 are equal. So we have P1 minus P2 is one half rho of uh, V2 square minus V1 square. So we can change the delta P is one half of rho. Uh, V2 is a capital A over a small a square minus one times V. So we can prove that the velocity that's coming in is the large V is two rho zero G H divided by rho of uh, a square over small a square minus one. Rho zero is the density of a liquid inside the manometer. So that's how you measuring the rate of flow inside of a pipe using a Venturi meter. Okay, uh, the last topic on fluid is called a viscosity. I get this from Wikipedia, so I hope you enjoy reading that. Uh, a viscosity is a, of a fluid is a measure of resistance to deformation at a given rate. So is this actually some kind of a res, uh, friction force? For liquid, it corresponds to informal concept of thickness. So for example, syrup has higher viscosity than water. So when you let it flow, the higher viscosity fluid will flow slower than the, the lower viscosity fluid. And the unit of viscosity is a force by time divided by an area. So it's half a unit of Newton second per square meters. And Newton per square meter is Pascal. So it's using it as the unit is Pascal seconds. So is this, let's, let's clarify this. It's viscosity is an internal friction force between layer of fluid. So if it falls through the tube, the fluid will more move quicker at the tube axis than near the wall. So when you, you possibly, um, having a heard about the proverb that 
the river run fast, deep. So actually, when the, the river flow, the way the place where it flow the fastest is at the middle and below the surface. Along the bank, the, the river will flow slow because there is a friction force from the layer of uh, the bank and also the friction force on the fluid. Now, this viscosity that measure of different uh, object uh, as shown here, for benzene, it is 0 0.6 uh, at 25 degrees Celsius. For water, it is 1.0016. It's millipascal per second, so it's time 10 to the minus 3 if you want to make it a pascal. Mercury is 1.5, and you see whole milk is run slower than water. It is 2.12. Uh, olive oil is 56. I will skip that beer. Honey is around 2,000 and 10,000. You see that honey is very, very uh, thick and slow to move. Ketchup also a higher one. Peanut butter is the the, the thickest. It's 10 to the uh, is 10,000 to a million. Okay, and then there's a pitch. I um, think it is uh, something like a rubber. So most of fluid having a viscosity. So when it's moved through several cases, it's causing the rate of flow to change. For example, in Posse law, okay, it is kind of an adaptation of Boli, uh, uh, of Bernoulli's law. So when you have a tube of length L and a radius R, and the two sides of the tube have pressure different delta P, and the rate of flow through the tube is proportional to delta P, inverse proportional to the length and proportional to R to the fourth. And there is a viscosity because the viscosity of fluid causes it to flow slower inside the tube. So the rate of flow through the tube is delta P pi R to the fourth divided by eight viscosity times L. And this is what we call a Poisson law. Okay, I'm not going to give you any examples of this, but usually in case of water, uh, viscosity is 10 to the minus three. It causing the, so you would not see much problem of the viscosity fluid to flow, or water to flow through a tube. But then if you pump a honey to a tube, you see that because it high viscosity, in order to get equal rate of flow, you need a lot of pressure to push it through. So that's how Poisson law works. Now, another example of the viscosity of fluid is Stokes' law. Stokes' law, looking at the object falling through a fluid. So when an object falling through a fluid itself is pulling down by the force of gravity, and then it has the buoyancy force upward. So the force of gravity is countered by the buoyancy force, but we assuming that the buoyancy force is not too much, that the objects still fall down. So the force of gravity is still four third of pi r cubed times the density of object 
you subtract by density of fluids times g. Now the thing is, as it flows through the fluid, a viscosity of fluid will cause a drag force through this. And Stokes said that for a circular object, a sphere object, falling down to the fluid, the drag force is six pi viscosity constant times radius and then times the velo velocity. So when an object falling through a fluid, it will slow down and eventually having terminal velocity is constant. The gravitational force subtract by buoyant force is equal to the drag force. So in that case, an object will fall down with constant velocity, okay? Um, they use this to measuring the viscosity of engine oil and many, many substances. Uh, because at terminal velocity, summation F is zero, so mg minus buoyant force minus uh, viscous force is zero. Mg is rho of an object, V times G. Buoyant force is rho of the fluid, V times G. And V is 4 third of pi R cube. And friction force or viscous force is 6 pi viscosity constant uh, in word terminal velocity. Plug all this in and rearrange the term. We get that the terminal velocity is 2 over 9 times rho minus rho zero. R squared G over viscosity constant. And this terminal, terminal velocity is depending on how viscous the object is. If the fluid is too viscous, it, the terminal velocity will be small. And that is the terminal velocity. Now, what happened if it's not reached terminal velocity yet? Now, in this case, before it reached terminal velocity, the three force on the left will equal to a m times a, uh, according to Newton's law. So mg minus b minus f equal to m dv by dt. Uh, rearrange the term, you will say that dv by dt is 1 minus rho 0 over rho g minus by 9 viscosity force over 2 r square rho v. And I will just say that the velocity of an object, the acceleration dv by dt is in the form of a minus bv. Now, come back to our motion chapter again. So let u become equal to a minus bv, and then du is minus bdv. We can change this into one, one over minus one over b du by dt is u. So moving on to both side du over u equal to minus b dt. And then we make its integration of u from equal to a minus bv zero initial velocity to a minus bv any velocity of du over u equal to minus equal zero to t of b dt. And because this integration give a log and then take a log out, we get the result that a minus bv divided by a minus b v0 equal to v minus bt. Suppose an object start with initial velocity to be zero. So you drop it into a fluid that without any initial velocity, you will see that the velocity is a form of a over b times one minus e over e to the power of minus bt plug in the value of b and looking at the graph, we see that the velocity of an object is gradually, uh, is increasing but not linear. And then it gradually goes to the terminal velocity. 
Okay. Um, so if you want to watch, uh, to measure the terminal velocity of the object, you have to wait for it to drop for some distance so that it's close to the terminal velocity as much as possible. Um, another another ex, uh, application for a movement in viscous solid is a movement of a ball. Now, if you play tennis, you see that there is a flat, a flat a top spin and a slide or ping pong table tennis. Now a flap is a, when you hit the ball and then the ball travel without spinning. So when the ball is travel without spinning, the velocity on the top and the bottom of the ball is the same. So it is uh, almost straight. The ball will going almost straight and then uh, falling down in projectile motion uh, at the at the possible uh, probable length. However, if we add spin into a ball, for example, a top spin when the ball is rolling forward. Now, as the ball passing through the air, okay. As the ball passing through the air, the top surface of the ball is moving against the movement of the air. So it slows down the movement of the air on the top. And it's moving in the same direction as the movement of the air on the bottom. So it's causing the air on the bottom to go faster. In this case, the velocity of the bottom will go faster than the top. So the pressure on the top is greater than the bottom. So this pressure will create a force going down. So this top spin drive, you will see that when you hit the ball with top spin drive, the ball going up high, it making a curve and then landing, rolling down at the end of the court. Or if you watch uh, the cartoon Subasa, it is called, is it, this is the drive shoot. Now, the other one is that if you roll it by 40, uh, 90 degrees, you get a side spin. So when you kick the ball or you hit the ball, making the spin uh, with the axis perpendicular to the ground, uh, the ball can turn left or turn right depending on which side that is spin. I think every boy who love to play football realize that this is what happened when uh, David Beckham or Cristiano Ronaldo shooting his ball. Uh, mostly Beckham losing a lot of uh, spin in his kick and the trajectory of the ball is incredible it's curved a lot and when you have to when you do that you need to add a lot of spin into your your ball okay that's all for the fluids and see you next time